Gears Pop is a new free-to-play mobile game that has just been released by Microsoft a few days ago. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing the ins and outs of the game and seeing if it's going to be worth your time to download or not. Now, when you first boot up the game, you will be placed into a tutorial guided by General Rom himself. And if you don't know the lore of the series, that is completely fine. There's no obligation to know anything about the Gears of War universe if you want to play this game. But General Rom will give you the uh, basics, the ins and outs of the game, uh, in a very basic manner. From what I've been told, this game does play very similarly to Clash Royale. However, I never downloaded the game. It never interested me. So I'm not really going to be making comparisons in this video. The main objective in the, of the game is pretty simple. You have three total outposts you want to defend. You have two turrets on your side, as well as your team leader who's in the very back. You get one point for each of these things that you destroy. So, if you destroy the two turrets on the enemy side, you'll have two points. If you destroy all three, you'll get three points. The game can end in a stalemate, but once the time runs out, it'll go into sudden death. First person to take control or destroy one of the other outposts will be the victor. Uh, so that's just the basics. You want to just destroy the enemy team, but how you want to do that is at your discretion. Every character is different, they have different strengths, different weaknesses, and some even have special abilities. People like Marcus Phoenix, who take 5 points to deploy in the field, are pretty strong, they do a lot of damage, and they take objectives pretty quick. Whereas people like Clayton Carmine, with their shotgun, once it's charged up enough, they release a devastating blast that will destroy or at least severely injure anything in its range. And you'll be able to see that on the screen when you deploy him. So each of your characters are unique, they are different, and depending on your playstyle, uh, your characters may differ from the person you're playing against. The characters in your inventory that have a little wall symbol in their icon means that they will take the objectives in the middle of the map. The more of those objectives you have, the closer and farther up you can spawn your characters, but there's no obligation to spawn them either close or far. It's wherever you choose. These things can be contested, and characters will be fighting each other in and out of the whole game. Now the games themselves are very quick, lasting only a few minutes at a time, and it's very fun and very competitive. The only gripe I really have with the game is the fact that it can seem a little bit pay to win. There is a store section where you can buy the premium currency, which is crystals, which can be used to unlock loot boxes quicker or just buy loot boxes straight up. You can also purchase coins from the in-game store with the crystals, which will help you to upgrade your pins once you have enough, and which will help you rank up and uh, just be more better outfitted in the long run. You can sync your Xbox Live account with this game and unlock achievements and get a few little extra things, but nothing that's going to be game-changing. Uh, so like I said, if you're not one that knows much about Gears of War or you don't even play Xbox, there is no obligation uh, to have an Xbox Live account, so no worries there. You have loot boxes in the game as mentioned before, you get one for each victory that you secure in the game and you can have a total of 4 unlocking at a single time. And the thing I really like about this is that they do unlock at the same time, so if you have one that takes 12 hours and one that takes 4 or one that takes 8 and they're all in your inventory, they'll all be unlocking simultaneously so there's no obligation to come back in 4 hours and select a new chest to start opening up. It's just a little thing that I like and it kind of just shows like, hey I don't need to spend real money, just wait a little bit and, and these things will be open. I don't gotta keep coming back to the game every other hour to check on the progress of my loot boxes. But you can pay to open these loot boxes early with those crystals, like I said. Uh, it'll cost more crystals for the longer amount of time that your boxes have to open, and the boxes do vary on what they give you. They will give you some of the coin currency, they will give you some cards, and potentially some thumpers which are used to play the horde mode. There is a few of the different modes, you got the versus mode, your player versus player, you got boot camp which is kind of just basic tutorials to give you some rewards, you got practice, so if you don't want to play uh, against another character and you want to test out your new cards, then that's what practice is for, and like I said, the horde mode which is uh, you can play with a friend that is in your clan and it'll just be PvE and you can unlock some new rewards with that. Now like I said, every single character is different and they all are for a different playstyle. 
so not everyone's going to have the same layout. The only thing I really don't like about the game is it can seem pay to win at times with the fact that you can buy the gear packs, you can buy the crystals and coins with real world money. There's been a few games that I've played where it just seems like someone just paid a little bit and they have a lot better cards than me. Uh, I don't want to spend any actual money on this game and as such some of my cards are kind of low powered because the loot boxes aren't guaranteeing you the specific card that you want but here we are so if you do have money to spend and you want to have an advantage on people then sure yeah real world money can impact the game i don't think it's too major as long as you have a good strategy in mind you could overpower the other people who have paid some money however you just need to keep that in the back of your mind if you're getting demolished it's very possible that this person's a higher level than you because they have either played longer or they've paid real world money now the actual gameplay of the game i do enjoy like i said i never played clash royale but i'm quite enjoying gears pop so far and i will be continuing to play it but i won't be spending any real world money i think the game is going to be worth your time there is a few balancing things that need to be addressed i think marcus phoenix while a very good character he seems a bit overpowered yes he takes five points to deploy but he's got a lot of strengths and only a few weaknesses but everything can be countered with due time you'll be learning the ins and outs yourself that's all i gotta really say about gears pop i think it's a fun game a few balance changes could make it a really big contender for this kind of mobile game market i know mobile games are giant i know clash royale is a pretty big game and i hope gears can kind of compete with that a little bit if you enjoy the gears of war universe then you'll probably enjoy this game i know people weren't too excited when it was announced at e3 a couple of years ago but here it is it's not bad but it's not amazing uh, I wouldn't really say you need to check this game out. If it's something that interests you, sure, download it. It's definitely a fun experience. And that's all I got to say on the subject. Thank you guys for sticking around and watching this video. And I will see you guys in the next one. Cheerio, mates.